Hello everybody, this is David Farrell with another music theory video. This is Set Theory Part 3. Part 3 of our series talking about set theory concepts. And Part 1, we talked about pitch class notation, we talked about pitch class intervals, the space between those different pitch classes, and we talked about placing a pitch class set in normal order. In Part 2, we kept going from there, and we moved from normal order to best normal order, while we talked about inversional equivalence, and we also talked about finding prime form. Prime form, the final version of how we would describe a pitch class set, sort of the name of the chord in pitch class set land. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about intervals, and we're going to talk about a tool that we can use to help us describe pitch class sets. And so a quick review, pitch class intervals we remember that we're using numbers to indicate the distance between different pitch classes and that we're always subtracting the first pitch from the second one to find our pitch class interval. And so here I've got a 5 going up to a 3, an F going up to an E flat, and I can use mod 12 to help me subtract 3 minus 15, I'll have to add 12 to that 3, 15 minus 5 is 10. And of course on the other side we've got the inversion of that, we've switched the order, 5 minus 3 to give us the pitch class interval of 2. Okay, This is something we already talked about in video 1, measuring these pitch class intervals. But we remember in our last video that we talked about inversional equivalence. We don't really care about the order in which pitches are placed. All we care about is which pitches are there and the distance between them. And so whether F is below E flat or E flat is below F, ultimately doesn't matter that much in set theory. We have a term that we use to, when we talk about simplifying pitch class intervals, and that is their interval class. Interval class is a small group of intervals that doesn't worry about the inversion of intervals. It tries to reduce our pitch class intervals to the smallest possible distance between one another. F to E flat is 10, E flat up to F is 2, but both of these belong to the same interval class because they're inversions of one another. In set theory, we have six interval classes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Interval class 1 contains the pitch class intervals 1 and 11, the major 2nd and the major 7th. Both of these involve two pitches that could be arranged as being one semitone apart, and so they belong to the same interval class. Interval class 2 contains pitch class intervals 2 and 10, contains our major seconds and our major sevenths. Again, these intervals are inversions of one another, and our interval class is only interested in taking the smaller version, the closer together version. Interval class 3 contains pitch class intervals 3 and 9, our minor thirds, or major sixths. Again, just inversions. We're ignoring the larger version and focusing on the closest way we could group them together. Interval class 4 contains pitch class intervals 4 and 8, major thirds and minor sixths. Interval class 5 contains pitch class intervals 5 and 7, our perfect fourths and perfect fifths. And interval class 6 contains pitch class interval 6, our tritones. Again, our interval class simplifies intervals so that they are in the smallest possible arrangement, and it treats these inversions of intervals as being equivalent. So if, there, if we have two pitches that could be a half step apart, it doesn't matter if they're arranged such that they are a half step apart or they're a major seventh apart, we're just going to say they belong to interval class 1. Simplifying our intervals, our pitch class intervals to interval classes, allows us to use a new tool to look at the intervallic content in a pitch class set. And that new tool is what we will call the interval class vector. The interval class vector counts the number of times each interval class occurs inside a pitch class set. By simplifying pitch class intervals into interval classes, we don't have to count up quite as many things. We have a smaller number of interval classes to focus on. 
and it allows us to really get down to the nitty-gritty and ignore all the different inversions of things. And so it's a really useful tool in understanding what sorts of relationships occur between pitches. Let's talk about how we might find an interval class vector. Again, to calculate the vector, we want to count the number of times each interval class occurs inside the set. And so I need to count every interval between every pitch in my pitch class set. And so I'm going to start in this particular pitch class set, 0, 2, 3, 7, by counting all the interval classes that I see that begin on 0, that begin on C. I have no interval class 1s. I have no pitches that are 1 or 11 semitones away from C. I have C to D as an interval class 2, and so I'll mark that down that I have one of those. I also have one interval class 3. I have a minor third or a 3 pitch class interval from C to E flat. And finally, I have C up to G. This is a pitch class interval of 7, but we know that 7 is not one of our interval classes. We only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 7, the perfect fifth, I would want to treat as its inversion as interval class 5. So from C, I have 0 interval class 1s, 1 interval class 2, 1 interval class 3, 0 interval class 4, 1 interval class 5, and 0 interval class 6. Next, I will start by counting my intervals starting on D, starting on pitch class 2. I don't need to count D to C. I've already counted that when I was counting from C, so I'll just count the one, D to my other pitches. D to E flat is pitch class interval 1. 3 minus 2 is 1 and that belongs to interval class 1. D to G, 7 minus 2 is 5, and that belongs to interval class 5. And so again, I'll keep a tally of what I've seen here. I had 1 interval class 1, 0 interval class 2, 0 interval class 3, 0 interval class 4, 1 interval class 5, and 0 interval class 6. Next, I'll count the intervals that I have that begin with E flat, with pitch class 3. Again, I've already calculated 0 to 3 when I started from C, and so I don't need to count that one again. I also don't want to count D to E flat again. I've already counted that when I started with D. So there's only one interval left in my pitch class set that I need to look at. That's E flat up to G, pitch class 3 to pitch class 7. I'll subtract 3 from 7 to get 4, which is interval class 4, and I'll make a note that that is the only interval class I have that starts on E flat. I don't need to calculate any intervals from G. I've already done all of them. I counted the interval C to G already, D to G already, and E flat to G already. And so I've counted now all the interval classes that exist in this particular pitch class set. We can now represent all of this information in an interval class vector. Our vector will be represented in the format shown here. It's got angle brackets on either side and it will have six numbers inside of it. Each number represents the amount of times an interval class appears. And the numbers go in order of our interval classes. And so the first number would show how many times interval class 1 appears. The second number, how many times interval class 2 appears. The third for interval class 3, and so on. And so the interval class vector for the set we were looking at, the set 0, 2, 3, 7, would be represented as follows. It would have an angled bracket on the left, and then the numbers 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0. I got those numbers from all the interval classes I counted up. You can see up top, when I have my interval class 1s, I only had 1 in all of my different arrangements. I had it starting from pitch class 2. My interval class 2, I had 1 starting on C, none on D, and none on E flat, so just the 1 there. Interval class 3, I had 1 starting on C, none starting on D, none starting on E flat, so only 1 there. Interval class 4, I had none starting on C, none starting on D, and 1 starting on E flat, so I used a 1 there. Interval class 5, I had 1 starting on C, another starting on D, and none starting on E flat, so I used the number 2. And I had no interval class 6s appear, none starting from C, D, or E flat. This is how I got my 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0. This represents all the different interval classes that appear between every pitch in my pitch class set. 
interval class vector is a useful analytical tool. It shows us what kind of intervals show up in our pitch class set. And we know how these different intervals sound, and so we have an idea when we look at the vector as to what sorts of sounds we might have. A vector that shows lots of interval class 1, half steps or major sevenths, and lots of interval class 6, tritones, is going to sound very different from an interval class that's made up of lots of 3s and 4s, lots of 3rds, major 3rds and minor 3rds. And so the vector does give us an idea as to how these things are actually going to sound when we listen to them. That's all for today in set theory video part number three. We talked about interval classes, simplifying our pitch class intervals into a smaller number of interval classes that represent the inversions of all the different possible intervals we have, reducing the number of intervals that we can really talk about. And then we talked about looking at a pitch class set through the lens of an interval vector that shows how many times all those interval classes show up in a given set. Interval vector, an efficient way at representing some important intervallic information with our sets. Thanks for watching this video. You can review some of this information in chapter 9 of your text. Bring questions to class next time. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you guys later.